Live from MacArthur, Ohio, here's Missy. When you said you had an intro, I thought you was going to say, <laughs> I am here with your Bible reading. Missy is here with your Bible reading. Sturman said he had an intro. I didn't know it was going to be that. There you go. Like the queen is coming through. I'm on live TV. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi Sandy. Hi Rosie. I hope you guys are all having a good day. I have been sick all morning. One of those days with my stomach, extreme stomach cramps and severe diarrhea all day, all morning. Living on Pepto and stomach meds. I'm feeling a little better right now. <laughs> a lot better right now. The cramps are have mostly subsided. Just slightly cramping, but I can handle that for sure. Alright. We finished up the book of Matthew last night, guys. Finished up one book of the Bible together so far this year. High five. Bye -bye. Virtual high five. Finished up the book of Matthew. Now we are going to start in the book of Mark. Where we start reading chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 28 today. If you want to follow along. And then, of course, we will be reading a psalm, which will be Psalm 35. Part of Psalm 35. And then our Proverbs will be Proverbs chapter 9, verses 11 and verse 12. So let me get back up here to Mark. All right. Here we go. Got your hat on today, Kelly. Uh, I'll, t I'll, I'll tell the rest at the end. I gotta set, tell you guys something, but I'll do that at the end of the Bible reading. Let's get started. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through verse 28. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Baptism and Testing of Jesus At that time, Jesus came from Naz <clears throat> Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. Jesus did not give in, though, to the to Satan. Satan tried and tried. You should see how he tried. I'm sure we'll get to that part, but <laughs> did not work. 
Jesus announces the good news. After John put after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Now we're going to see Jesus calling his first disciple. Do you remember who Jesus' first disciple was? From reading the book of Matthew? Let's see if you're right. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Now lastly, for Mark today, we're gonna to see Jesus driving out an impure spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority, he even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him, about Jesus, spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. And that's where we're stopping with Mark today. So you see Simon and his brother Andrew were the first disciples. And then the son Zebedee. Okay, guys, we are going to start Psalm 35 today with verses 1 through verse 16. Psalm of David. Contend, Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and armor. Arise and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Say to me, I am your salvation. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. May they be like chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them out. May their path be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Since they hide their net for me without cause, and without cause dug a pit for me, may ruin overtake them by surprise. May the net hide entangle them. May they fall into the pit to their ruin. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like the Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who rob them. Ruthless witnesses come forward. They question me on things I know nothing about. They repay me evil with good and leave me like one unbereaved. Yet when they were ill, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayers returned to me unanswered, 
I went about mourning, as though for my friend or brother. I bowed my head in grief, as though weeping for my mother. But when I stumbled, they gathered in glee. Assailants gathered against me without my knowledge. They slandered me without ceasing. Like the ungodly, they maliciously mocked. They gnashed their teeth at me. And that's where we're going to stop with Psalm 35. Okay, guys, we're going to end today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 9, verses 11 and verse 12, which says, For through wisdom your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Okay, guys, that was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a great day. I forgot I wanted to tell you guys, um, Sandy, Kelly, April, I had you guys all a Valentine, and my Cindy was supposed to come out last week and get them because I didn't have any stamps and she just wanted to send them out for me. But because of the weather, she didn't make it out. So I still have your guys' Valentines. So I haven't been able to send them out yet, so I don't know whether to send them out whenever she gets out here or just wait and save them for next year. I'll give you yours, Kelly, since you're coming here, but I don't know what to do about Sandy's and April's. I don't know whether to just go ahead and send them late or just keep them till next year. I don't know. I'm sorry I didn't get them out before Valentine's Day, guys. I just didn't have any money or stamps. Same thing with my nephew's birthday card. His birthday's this month, and I gotta get stamps and stuff for his card before I can send it out. But, um, that's all I needed to say today, guys. Prayer requests are the same. Please pray for Sherm. He went to the kidney doctor today. She thinks there's something wrong with his prostate. And they're going to do an ultrasound and stuff on his prostate and blood work. She thinks that's where all the pain is coming from. So now we don't go. We're not just dealing with the heart and the cysts and the kidneys. Now we are dealing with probably a prostate problem as well. And Barb Post, they transferred her to Riverside. She's still in bad shape. She needs prayer. Christopher Surback, he's still in the hospital, you know. He may be getting to come out May, or sorry, March 2nd, one day before his birthday and Abby's birthday. They share the same birthday even. Um, he still looked awful sick to me in the photos they put on yesterday. His hair's falling out really bad, I mean, really bad, like he is completely bald. Um, he's got hair on the top, and other than that, he's bald. I mean, he looks really sick, but... Um, so I don't know how they can let him out this early, but anyways, um, April and Linda Thacker and our sister in Christ, Sandy, and Kenny Wellman needs prayers. So with that being said, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.